Hello guys, welcome to the fourth delivery of the differences between Sistema and traditional martial arts. Today I'll be discussing about the fourth principle of the fourth Sistema pillar or Sistema fundamental, which is structure, also known as the form. Okay, there is a one essential criteria that needs to be met for the Sistema form of semi structure and that is that it has to be natural. I have discussed it before in other of my videos. We're humans, so we would like to stand then in a human-like natural way, which is standing straight. Alright? The other uh, criteria that needs to be met is that it has to be compatible with all the other system of pilots in terms of movement, in terms of relaxation, and in terms of breathing. When we are standing straight, we can breathe comfortably. Right? We can also move and transition from one direction to another direction in a seamless and a relaxed, natural way. When, our, when we're standing in a balanced position, we are also a more, a more able to relax. Okay? Uh, the structure or the form also have to uh, meet three components, which is stability, movement, and balance. Okay? When we talk about stability, that means that we can position ourselves in a way that we're not going to trip, that is no dangerous to us, and that we can move and transition from empty hand into all our other weapon system in a safe, seamless, uh, uh, and intuitive way. Um, when we are in balance, then it's also less likely that we are gonna that we're gonna fall out of our feet, and that we can transition as well from one direction to another without having to shift our way. Uh, to, to evidently, because that takes time. Um, so uh, I'm going to stand a little bit farther away so I can uh, uh, show the whole body into the camera and I will have to speak a little bit louder because I'll be farther away from the microphone. All right. So if I stand here, right, the, the, the essential uh, the points then will be you know, standing in a, in, a, in a natural way, human way like, with our uh, shoulders aligned with our hips, you know, with our weight distributed uh, in an even way between our feet. We position ourselves in, a, in, in an angle. This way, if any blow is thrown at us, then it's more likely that that impact is going to deflect. While if we're standing in a straight way, then it will be perpendicular to us. So 90 degrees, we'll, take, we'll be taking the full blow. So these are the tactical reasons be behind our, our form or our structure. So we stand there in an angle, in a natural, comfortable way where we can breathe easily, and we're in balance, we're stable, the weight distribution is equal between our feet, our shoulders are aligned with our hips. Uh, we slightly put the face down, that way we can protect our, our our neck, you know, in case anything that comes our neck, if this is a strike or a slash, then it's less likely they're going to penetrate in our neck, it's protected by the chin. It's also a exposing more the forehead and reducing the exposure of our face. Our face is full of vulnerable bones that are easy to break if we take a blow in the face, while this forehead is the stronger bone in the skull. So we're going to expose the forehead so in case that a, a strike lands on our when on this on the part of our head, we we're more likely going to land on our forehead. Okay? The hands are positioned here halfway, okay? and the reason for that is that it's at equal distance in any direction. So if we need to protect up, there's a short distance. If we need to protect down, it's a short distance. Same to the side, hands open. Um, so it doesn't represent a threat to our opponent. We don't want to show the feet. Okay? So, uh, this is known as the ready position, and it's exactly the same uh, that you are engaging in a hand-to-hand in -hand combat without the use of any weapon, or if you are uh, using weapon. From here, we can easily transition to a uh, strike with a close hand, you know, using the fist. We can 
easily change directions to move in any, in, in any direction that, that we need to go to address, uh, address threats that are coming to in, in different directions. Okay, so now if you uh, bear with me one second, I will grab some of the training gear so I can continue to make my point. Right, I'm wearing now my training duty belt. And this is our training rifle. We are filming in a residential area. These are training guns, they are not real. Um, so don't freak out, there's also no magazine here, no magazine here. Uh, so we comply in core system combatis with all the local laws and also regulations from the internet. So again, so we stand on our ready position here. So we're ready to engage on our empty hand combat, but when we need to transition to any of other weapon systems, this transition happen seamless, seamlessly and intuitively. Okay, just by know, having a hold of our primary weapon, we uh, uh, slightly bend our knees a little bit more, we tuck uh, the hip uh, further in to compensate the weight of our equipment, and then in this position we are ready to engage uh, with our firearm, with our primary weapon. Uh, from here, you know, same, same reasons, we can uh, comfortably and safely and stably uh, walk you know, with the firearm. Okay. And from there, we can also change direction. And then put the firearm down, and we are again on our original empty hand stance. Okay? So these are the benefits of uh, of our natural, balanced, and uh, stable uh, 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 standing or form of a structure. Okay, but we can transition seamlessly between weapon system uh, that this is that we're going to engage uh, on a on a firefight, um, or we are going to engage with our baton. No? The stance is the same. If we are going to engage on a knife confrontation, the transition between equipment is always seamless, always intuitive and safe. Okay? So we put this gear away now. Now we can discuss what's the difference there between that natural balance and stable uh, structure or form from Sistema that is fully compatible with all the weapon systems and also uh, compatible with modern weapons and tactics, tactics employed by most law enforcement agencies and military around the world with traditional martial arts. Traditional martial arts has a, a, a set of stances that were developed centuries ago uh, based on the uh, way to fight that was valid back then and also adapted to the weapons that were available also back then. Okay. To prove my point, to make my point there, I got here my Bokan, training Bokan. Okay. And the most common stances that we we'll find there are feet in front, around time and a half, the, the separation between feet, depends on which traditional martial art we're talking about, those differences are uh, very mild, uh, time, time and a half, the width of shoulders, the same of the direction of the toes, pointing straight or slightly outward, okay, from there, you now we got our bokeh here, and we then unleash the sword from there. Right? Okay. The other 
the stance then, it was what the toes pointing forward here, the rear foot pointing back there, the rear legs takes around 70% of the weight and the front leg around 30% of the weight. Another stance is the horse stance, so it's very common as well, with the weight is equal in both legs, around time and a half the width separation, and this is more used with empty hand techniques. Okay? What is the issue with these traditional stances? Okay? As I said at the beginning, these stances are not compatible with modern weapons and tactics because they were developed a long time ago based on different different uh, uh, battles or different ways to wage war and the weapon system that were valid back then. There were swords, spears, uh, bows and arrows and etc. Okay? So when we try to adapt these stances to modern weapons and, and, and tactics the, there is a, a clash and there is a saying that we use in the industry in Spanish that goes something like um, La duda es la madre de todas las cagadas which translates in something like hesitation is the, is the mother of all fuck ups please excuse my core language but this is an age restricted video anyway so if you are under 18 years of age you shouldn't be watching it um, so yeah, so when we try to adapt something that is not uh, incompatible with the web, uh, modern modern times, modern type modern type of violence that we find on the street or in the battlefield if you are in the military, um, there is an incongruence there that will conflict with our uh, with our way of thinking. So the problem here is that when you are trained to to walk, to fight an empty hand in a particular way and then you have to move to a, another weapon system, in this case a firearm, and you have to adopt a different stance, a different way of move, then there is an incongruence there. And if you try to mix and match and then you say, okay, I want to train empty hand combo from this uh, martial arts and I'm going to uh, uh, mix it up with, 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 the, with the baton or, or, or the stick from a different martial arts, we also have different stances. This is not only more time consuming, but also create, it creates even more confusion in the practitioner. So this uh, uh, becomes critical when makes the, 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 the individual to hesitate. When you hesitate in this industry and in law enforcement and the military is when people get hurt. Either this is yourself, your colleagues, or innocent people. So this is the, the reason or the main reason why we have to remove hesitation and remove the way to remove hesitation is by having a fully uh, seamless uh, system that can uh, uh, operate empty hand or with all the weapon system without interruption, without disruption. Uh, Sistema is a, it, it, it has evolved into this while traditional martial arts have not. They are still doing the, se the things the same way that they did centuries ago, and then they try to forcefully uh, educate uh, modern uh, tactics and try to train uh, law enforcement and to convince them that what they learn can be used. And yes, it can, but it has to be forced in. It's like trying to fit a square into a circle. And, and that is what creates the, the issues in terms of hesitation. That you have to be adapting you know, and say, okay, I'm, I'm empty hand, I can do this. You know, okay, now I'm using my baton, I have to do something different. Now I'm going to engage with, with my firearm, I have to stand differently and move differently. Okay? In Sistema, you can move the same way that you are operating your, your, your firearms, or you are working with the baton, or you are engaging in an empty hand. A, a combat a, the same way. It, all across the board is the same. From that balanced position, you can deliver kicks in any direction without committing, without losing your balance, without uh, messing up with your with your with your stability. So 
So this is the, 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 this is the, the big issue, you know, when you when, when the difference between a, a sistema and traditional martial arts form or a structure. It, it creates it creates an incompatible mess between weapon systems. All right. I hope that clarify a, one of the uh, of the major differences on our fourth pillar between sistema and traditional martial arts. Uh, uh, if you have any questions, put it in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to reply. Uh, you know, share, comment, like, and we will continue making more comparisons because they're getting very, very popular. It's a lot of, of, of things to share out there. Um, this is the full delivery to close this series, which was based on the four system of pilots compared to all the traditional martial arts. But we'll be making more comparisons like how we uh, uh, punch in Sistema compared to traditional martial arts, how we kick in Sistema compared to traditional martial arts, how we take blows in Sistema compared to traditional martial arts. So stick around and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.